of you were blessed during the first service. You really learned. How of you were blessed? All right. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. So in this service, we're going to be trashing that issue. Why the law? Why was the law of Moses given? All right. So if the law of Moses is not a perfect um, will, why was it given? So we're going to look at it from scripture. And I'm expecting that after we are done with this, you'll be able to do a good word or good service to it by teaching others. Because you teach, you whatever you learn, make sure you teach it. It's very important so that other people can come to the fellowship of what you're learning. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Now, the law was not God's original plan. God never, God never planned to relate with his people according to a law. The Bible is very clear about it. God never planned to relate to his people according to the law, the law of Moses. All right? All right, no father, all right, relates with his children by the law and tells them that if you don't keep it, I'm going to kill you. You understand? No, fathers don't do that. All right, fathers don't do that. So the, the law actually was not God's original plan. But we are going to look at the word of God and I want you to follow because you're going to, I'm going to be teaching some things I don't think I've mentioned before or maybe I mentioned many years ago. All right, but I want you to pay attention to this. Galatians chapter number three. Galatians chapter number 3. Amen. Now look at Galatians. Let, let's look at Galatians 3, verse 17. It says, And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of non in faith. Hallelujah. The law was how many years after? 430 years afterward, the promise was given. So he's saying that the covenant that was confirmed before of God. So that means that the covenant God is referring to is the covenant made with Abraham. Is that correct? So he says that that covenant, amen, all right, was confirmed. And the law came, all right, 430 years after. Amen. All right. Cannot disannul that it should make the promise of non-effect. For if the inheritance be, by, be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by what? Promise. So that means the covenant is referring to is the Abrahamic covenant. Is that clear? Come on, is that clear? So it now says in verse 19, Wherefore then serve the law? It was what? Added. It was what? Added. Now, let's look at that word added. The word added is from the Greek word prostitemi. Prostitemi means to put to. It means to lay beside. So you have something that is the main thing. All right. Maybe so, so the plan of a house. Prostitemi means to lay beside. All right. Another thing. So that means the promise was the plan. The covenant by faith. The covenant. The Abrahamic covenant was God's plan. That means the promise of salvation by faith through Christ Jesus. That was the plan. So, the law was laid beside the plan. Why was the law laid beside the plan? The Bible says that it was laid beside the plan because of what? Transgression. Look at it. Wherefore then served the law? It was added because of what? Transgressions. Till what? The seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by the angels, by angels, in the hand of a mediator. So it's telling you that the law was given for a time. The law was a temporal arrangement. The law was given till Christ would come. So the law was given till the seed, all right, would come. But it was added because of transgressions. I am going to take you also to the house of faith. All right, we are going to look at the transgression being spoken about. You understand? Because you are, you're going to see the typology in the household of faith from Genesis 12 to Genesis 16. Then I'm also going to take you to Exodus 19 for you to see that moment where the Lord was given, law was given, where God changed, all right, his approach to the children of Israel and why he did so, or where God seemed to change his approach and why he did so. Are you following what I'm saying? You're going to see it from Scripture. Amen. So let us continue. He says, hmm, all right, all right, put some me that's to lay beside. So the law was laid beside the original plan, not being the original plan itself. It was given to point out sin and to show that man is guilty before God. Because without the law, man or men would not know that they are sinners. Men would not acknowledge their sin. 
Because there is nothing that says that what they did is wrong. The purpose of the law was to point out sin. Not to justify men from the sin, but to point it out. Are you seeing that? Look at Romans chapter number Romans chapter number 3 and verse 19. Romans 3, 19 says, Now we know that what things soever the law said, he said to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and the world may become what? Guilty. Before what? God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Clear? Clear? Can you see that? He says, all right, let me read it again. Now we know that what things soever the law said is here to them who are under the law, that every mouth, not some mouth, every mouth may be what? Stop. So you cannot speak boldly because you are guilty. That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of of sin by the law is the knowledge of sin Romans 4 15 you say ah but pastor ah, is it not lesson from the book of Hebrews let's know let us get some help from his brother all right Romans glory to God Romans 4 15 look at what it says let's have a verse 14 he said for if they which are of the law be heirs Faith is made void, and the promise is made of what? Non effect. Because the law worketh what? Wrought. For where no law is, there is no what? Transgression. So he says the law worketh what? Anger. Wrought. Because where there is no law, there is no sin. So if you, there, there is no law against lying, you cannot punish men for lying. Can you see that? If there is no law against stealing, you cannot punish men for stealing. If you, if you put, if you're on the highway and there is no sign that says don't, don't ride and um, drive beyond 100 km per hour. If you are doing 120, no policeman can stop you and say you broke the traffic limit. Why? There is no traffic limit. So the reason why you put a traffic limit there is so that you can catch those who will break it. Are you following what I'm saying? Exactly. So the purpose of the traffic limit there is not to make men, praise God, all right, abide because there are some men that will still break it. Amen. The purpose of the traffic limit there is to catch those who will break it. Are you following? So the purpose of the law, amen, was to make men sinners. That was the purpose. For to make men come to the consciousness that they were sinners. Amen. So the law was to reveal to men who they already were. Sinners. Amen. Romans 5.20 It says, moreover, the law entered that the offense might what? Amen. Moreover, the law entered. Now look at the word. The word entered there is paresekomai. All right? Paresekomai. That is P-A-R-E-I-S-E-R-C-H-O-M-M-A-I. What does it mean? It means to come in secretly. Praise God. To come in secret. And you will find out why this, word is, why this word is used when we go to Genesis and study the allegories. You will see why it says, coming by stealth. It wasn't planned. Coming by stealth, coming secretly. To creeping, to stealing, to enter in addition or to come in what? Besides. Hallelujah. To come in besides. He said, moreover, the law entered. So that means the law was added. The law was laid beside. That the offense might abound. Hallelujah. So to multiply the effect of sin to man's consciousness so that man would understand that he is a sinner, the law was given. Praise God. Because without the law, man will wallow in self righteousness, he will call himself what he is not. Are you following? So you now find you find it in the world. Many folks who don't say, no, there's nothing wrong in this. There's nothing wrong with this. I, I believe I'm a good person. Have you had people like that? Oh, I believe I'm a good person. They are not born again. I'm, I, I believe I'm a very good person. I believe I'm a, I'm a decent human being. You understand? 
I, I believe I'm a good I'm a good person, you know. I believe I'm okay. I find that guy. Without the law of Moses, without the law, that's going to be all of mankind. All of mankind will be sinners, but not admit that they are sinners. Are you seeing that? All of you understand? Because it's by the law we know that you are, uh, we define adultery. But without the law, there is no adultery. Are you following what I'm saying? Because it's by the law adultery is defined. It's by the law fornication is defined. But if you take the law out, then there's nothing. So you can't call it a sin where there is no law that says it is one. So the purpose of the law, so that means the law was added. It was, the law is not evil. The law had a purpose. It was added so that men will be conscious of their sin. Men will be conscious of their unbelief. Men will be conscious that they are guilty before God. Men will be conscious that they are falling from God's plan. So the law was to bring men to Christ, as we see. Hallelujah. Before you say, oh, this, this law of Moses, nonsense. There's a purpose for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans 5.20. All right, we read that. He said what? Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Romans 7.5. Romans chapter number 7 and verse 5. Look at what it says. He says, For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto what? Death. So the law didn't bring forth fruit unto life. It brought forth fruit unto what? Death. Hallelujah. Amen. Very, very important. Very, very, very important. Look at Romans chapter 5 verse 13. I just want to show you so that you know it's without doubt. Romans 5.13. What does he say? Romans 5.13 says, For unto the law, sin was in the law. Uh, uh, for, for unto the law, sin was in the world. So actually what he says, for unto the law, he's saying, for before the law, right? Sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is what? No law. Hallelujah. Sin is not imputed when there is no law. Just a moment, guys. All right, I'm good. All right, sin is not imputed when there is no law. All right. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. So that means sin, law, the law of Moses was the means to whom with which you could impute sin against men. And when you could impute sin against men, they had to what offer sacrifices, praise God, to what cover their sin. So those sacrifices, the law of Moses, and all those ceremonies that were being done was to build a consciousness in men to let them understand, listen to me, all right, your state of unbelief as is what has necessitated the killing of this animal. Your state of unbelief as what, is what has necessitated what? The offering of blood. Your state of unbelief and your sin is what has necessitated the office of the high priest. So, in repeating those ceremonies, the consciousness was built in the hearts of men over and over and over so that they will come to the place to understand, all right, that when Christ comes, Christ is the end of all of those sacrifices. Christ is the reason, hallelujah, why all of those things were instituted so that men can come to faith. Because if there was not that consciousness of sin, all right, consciousness that they needed a savior, when Christ came, they would not be able to identify him. When Christ comes, they will not know the need for him. When Christ comes, there will not be a reference point. Are you following? Just like Adam saw Christ in Genesis and did not know why he needed him. Oh, come on. Are you seeing it now? So that when Adam saw Christ in Genesis and didn't know why he needed him, why would I need him? He didn't know why. Why do I need him? I'm in healing. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm cool. Why do I need him? Why do I need him? So he chose to live life without him. And many men continue like that. Like that. But when the law came, it opened. All right, God meant to now begin to see the effects of their rebellion against God's plan. So the purpose of the law was to make men come to the end of themselves. To make men understand that that tree of life in the garden, you need him. Are you following? Hmm. All right. So, the law made it legal to call sinful activities, activities sin and therefore increase the consciousness of the same and increase the influence of death. The law was added till Christ would come. Romans 8.1. You find out that the Bible talk about how that, that um, 
the law was given to the fullness of time. Why was it that it took 4,000 years for Christ to come? Because that was the time, hallelujah, God had already predestined, all right, for, to pass. Because it was now at that time that God knew that when Christ came at this time, after all the prophecies have been prophesied by the prophets, after all the, um, the typologies have been instituted by the law and carried out for thousands of years, when Christ come, it will be easy for mankind to identify that this is the Christ. Because there will be many witnesses in Scripture Hallelujah, that would have been spoken, all right, and that would have, that have been spoken and written in the scriptures testifying that this is the Christ. So that when Christ came, he died, did his redemptive work, and went to heaven, all right, men could go to the book and check and say, okay, here, 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 here. In the volume of the book, it has been written of him. So we can have faith from the book that this man, Christ, is the perfect offering for sin. Are you seeing that? Amen. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now listen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So what the law could not do, Christ the son did. Amen. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Look at what it says. Verse 3. It says, Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. For, but when the fullness of time, can you see that? Was come. God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Are you seeing that? All right? Made under the law. So the fullness of time, hallelujah, was when Christ came. Amen? Amen? The fullness of time was when what? Christ came to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. So the Lord's job was to show men that they are, what their true condition was so as to cause men to come to Christ who would give true liberty. The law was a schoolmaster. Galatians chapter number 3 I believe. Amen. Look at what he says here. Galatians 3.23, it says, But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Amen. Shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. So the law kept us for faith. Are you following? The law kept us, all right, until what? Faith showed up. Until the time. And the faith is talking about is Christ. Is that clear? So the Lord kept us until faith showed up. So for before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. 24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Now the word schoolmaster is the Greek word peda, peda gogos. Peda gogos. Peda is child. Gogos means a, a tutor. A child tutor. Alright? That is a child teacher. Like a nanny. All right, a tutor. All right, the, the pedagogos, all right, in Greek um, culture was a slave, usually, not all the time, but usually a slave. All right, that was a guardian for little children, all right, of people of influence, people that were rich. All right, and the purpose of the pedagogos was to shape the worldview of the child till he becomes a man. For example, the pedagogos for Alexander the Great was Aristotle. All right, no, was he Aristotle? Yeah, Aristotle, the philosopher. So I also was his tutor from when he was a child. Was his guardian from when he was a child. Taught him everything he knew. Then when he became a man, he didn't need the, 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 the tutor anymore. Are you following? So the, the law was given for a time period. It was not eternal. It was for a time period. And the purpose of the law was to bring us to Christ. He said, well, for the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. So the moment Christ comes, the law is over. We don't need the law anymore. Hallelujah. The moment the Christ comes, who is the substance, we don't need the law anymore. Amen. So the purpose of the law was to point to Christ so that when Christ came, those who had been given the law would, by the law, recognize that he was the one the law pointed to. That's why you have in St. John's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 39. Jesus says, Sat the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, for they are they that testify of me. Hebrews 10, 7, in the volume of the book. What book? The book of the Old Covenant. All right? It is written of me. I come to do thy will, O God. Send Luke's gospel 24, 27. Luke's gospel 24, 47. 
Hallelujah. All right. He says, beginning at the prophets, all right, beginning at the prophets, and in all the scriptures, he what? Showed them the scriptures that spoke about himself. Hallelujah. Beginning at the law and in all the prophets, all right, he expounded unto them the things concerning himself. In 24. Then in 47, he talks about the law, the beginning at Moses, beginning at Moses and all the prophets. Then in 47, he says, beginning at Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Hallelujah. And if you understand how the Old Testament writings were written, you'll find that's talking about the entire book. Amen. That's the Nevuhim, the Ketuvim, and the Torah. All right. So he's talking about the entire book. Praise God. All right. So it points to Christ. So Christ, the end of the law is Christ. Romans 10, 3 to 4. Christ is the end of the law. The moment Christ showed up, law is over. Because the law was given to keep men till Christ. So that when Christ came, men would recognize, oh, our Savior from sin. Hallelujah. Our justification from sin. Our salvation from sin. Our forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. The end of sin and death. The, pre the, the beginning of spirit and life. Are you following? That's the purpose of the law. Amen. The purpose of the law. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 10. Notice something. Abraham was blessed without the law. Isaac was blessed without the law. Jacob was blessed without the law. Joseph was blessed without the law. Hallelujah. Noah was blessed without the law. Showing you that God did not need the law to bless man. Are you following? The premise for which God sent Moses to Egypt to bring Israel out of Egypt was the promise he made to Abraham before the law. Amen. Amen. So God being a provider, God making a promise of eternal life by faith, all of that was by the law. It was, be, was before the law. It was by promise. It was by his grace. Benevolent grace. Romans 10, verse 3. It says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, <laughs> oh. for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God, was this true of only these guys Paul was talking about? Let me look at it. Let's look at it. Romans 10, 1. Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may, might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Is it the, God's righteousness? Was it the same righteousness Abraham had? Guys, was it the same righteousness Abraham had? The Bible says Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for what? For righteousness. Abraham! Before the law. So Abraham was, uh, God was made righteous with the righteousness of God. What is the righteousness of God? The righteousness by faith independent of works. Are you following what I'm saying? Hallelujah. For they being ignorant. So they were ignorant. So the children of Israel were ignorant. Ignorant of the righteousness all right, that is God's righteousness. And they were going about to establish their own righteousness. I will show you that in Exodus. They were going about to establish their own righteousness. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that what? Believes. The end. Hello, we talked about it in the first service. The end of the law. So now let us visit Abraham's house. Look at neighbor and say, welcome to the household of it. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're glad. That I think they, they say next week we can do church. So we do social distancing. Amen. To, for regulatory purposes. So. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for many, many of our brethren that got tacted coronavirus and have been healed. Amen. I mean, they are healed. Glory to God. Glory to God. They are healed. Glory. Hallelujah. I remember one who called me, I have corona. Calm God, are you talking? Why are you crying? Who told you that because you have corona, you are dying? <laughs> oh, it's positive. Uh -huh, so, you'll be fine. Let's pray. Glory to God. Let's pray. Pray, cost the thing, and they are fine. There's even one self. The person is positive, no symptoms. Amen. You know sometimes eh, some people die after they are confirmed that they have a disease. You know that? 
Before they knew, they are fine. You understand? You know, there are some folks, eh? Before they knew they had a disease, all right, and they had no symptoms, no problem. They are doing well. But when they went for the checkup, then the doctors told them that you have this disease, and these are the symptoms, and, and explain the symptoms. You'll be feeling weak, you'll be feeling tired, chest pain, you know, you won't be able to sleep well. You know, as the doctor was giving them a word of it, you understand, of the symptoms, all of a sudden they now began to. <laughs> Hey, let me tell you one story. It's just a digression. Permit my digression. I know Dami is looking at me that Pastor, I told you the time limit on Mixer. Don't worry, those of you on Mixer, if you ends, you enter Facebook. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We will extend our plan with Mixer so that it's more time. So, um, there was a particular study done, done one time where they took people that had cancer. Mm? All right. And told them that, oh, you're fine. You're, you don't have cancer anymore, you know. I think I think Pastor Chris told this story, and I have read it in some, uh, you know, that um, there was a, it's a time when they switched results of two men. The one that had cancer, they told him he had a clean bill of health. The one that had a clean bill of health, they told him he had what cancer. In two years, the guy that didn't have cancer but was told that he had cancer died. Because he was telling everybody, I have cancer. They say I have two years. Less than two years to live. And he was telling everybody. And there were people pity party, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. All of a sudden, the guy that didn't have cancer began to manifest the signs of cancer. He says, I have fallen off. You understand of that guy? And he died in two years. The guy that had the cancer, but was told he didn't have cancer, was telling everybody, brethren, I'm free. I beat it. <laughs> and the guy lived. <laughs> he lived. <laughs> Hallelujah. Confess God's word about yourself. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Okay. Now, let's visit Abraham's house. I want to show you something in Abraham's house that many people sometimes meet. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Now, if you look at verse 21, look at what it says here. It says, Tell me ye that desire to be under the law. Do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, that is a slave, and the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are, and what? Allegory. That means typology. For these are the two covenants. Can you see that? They are what? The two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, that is the law, which then direct to bondage, which is Agar. Are you seeing that? So Agar and Ishmael represent what? The law. Amen. Now question. In Genesis 12, when God gave the promise to Abraham, all right, was Agar in the house? No. Agar was not there. Praise the Lord. When did Agar come in? Agar came in in Genesis 16. After Abraham and Sarah left Egypt. Because in Genesis 14, the Bible says they went down to Egypt. So when they came out from Egypt, praise God, they came out with Agar. Glory to God. So Egypt is a typology of the world, the worldly system. Amen. So they went and they took Agar out of Egypt into the household of it. Hallelujah. Now notice, when you read in Genesis 16, you are going to find out that the person, the idea to make Agar a wife. Amen. Agar didn't rape Abraham. Neither did Abraham rape Agar. It was not an affair. It was the housewife that said, honey, go into my slave. Let us make her a wife. It might be that the promise would be, the promised child would be what? Through her. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So that means Agar had a mouth, had a say in the household of faith by permission. 
It was not God's idea. Amen. Ega coming in, hallelujah, was by the actions to whom, of, of those to whom God gave the promises to. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Now, when he says in Galatians 3.19 that he was added because of transgression, what does transgression mean? Transgression is the Greek word paradido. Uh, 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 oh, let, let, let's go and check it, please. I think it's para, it's parabasis. Let me be sure. Galatians 19. All right? Yeah, it's parabasis. Parabasis means a disregarding. It means to disregard. So that means when he says that it was added because of transgressions, if you look at it in typology, what that meant was that Sarah disregarded the promise. Are you following? God gave a promise that you will have a child, all right, with your husband. She disregarded it and began to say it might be that what God meant was that you will get it with a slave. So that disregarding is what is the transgression. So what the Bible scriptures is showing us is that the law was added because Sarah, all right, and Abraham for a moment disregarded the promise. It was their permission that brought the law in. Hallelujah. For without that disregarding, there would have been no Ishmael. Are you seeing that? There would have been no Ishmael. And Ishmael and Eger are typologies. So what now happened was that until the law was in the household of faith, until who came? Until the seed came. Who was the seed in typology? Isaac. So the moment Isaac came, what happened? Sarah began to say that drive out the bond woman and her son. For the son of the bond woman shall not be a co-heir with the son of the free. So that means the law has done and served its purpose. Ishmael has served his purpose. For 13 years, he has served, served his purpose. Now that the promise has come, drive him out. Can you see the typology? Can you see the typology? Ishmael came to be by the permission of the bearers of the promise. They permitted Ishmael in. They permitted Agar in. So they legally allowed both in. Hallelujah. It was not God's plan to deal with Abraham and deal with Israel, all right, according to Ishmael. But Abraham, all right, and his wife, by permission, brought Ishmael in, brought Agar in, because they disregarded the promise. So when you disregard the promise, when you disregard the tree of life, what you are permitting is sin, sin and death. Are you seeing that? What happened in the garden is what repeated itself in the household of Abraham. Are you seeing that? You disregard the tree of life. You disregard the promise. What is the effect? Sin and death. The law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Are you guys following this? Are you following this? Oh. So, Agar came into the house after they left Egypt. They picked Agar while leaving Egypt. She wasn't there when the promise was given because she was not in the plan to give the promised child. Agar was added by the permission of Sarah and Abraham, the heirs of the promise. So, Abraham and Sarah brought Sarah, um, Agar in and Ishmael willfully. But still, Ishmael was to stay in the house of the faith till Isaac came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the plan was always grace through faith, independent of works. Look at Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4 and verse 13. Look at it. It says, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through what? The law. But, by, but through what? The righteousness of faith. So that means that the promise to Abraham was, to, all right, was righteousness what? By faith. Independent of the law. And the very fact that that was promised before Agar shows that the plan was righteousness through faith. Are you following that? Are you following that? Hallelujah. Now, in the relationship between God and Israel, I want us to now study at what point exactly was the law introduced? At what point? 
Because if you study Exodus properly, you will notice that from the beginning of Exodus, God doesn't deal with Israel according to a law. I, 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 you understand? God doesn't deal with Israel according to a law. No, it doesn't. Amen. In fact, before the law was given, they sinned. I'll show you in scripture. And no death happened. Even though they sinned. Praise God. Turn your Bible to Exodus 19. Exodus 19. You will find out that the first thing God did was he preached the gospel to Israel. Exodus 19. I hope some people are not saying, oh, this pastor self. Ah, and you'll be bringing things out. <laughs> there was no one that said, you'll be bringing things out. <laughs> that it was, I, I was reading it. I couldn't see it. And now, that's why you need a pastor. Hallelujah. <laughs> that's why you need one. Amen. That's why you need one. Exodus 19. Pay attention. It says, in the third month, that's three months after, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Hallelujah. For they were departed from Rephidim. Now, pay attention. No? They came to the wilderness of what? Sinai. What does Sinai mean? Sinai is where the law was given. Is that correct? All right. But the law has not been given yet. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went unto God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, Pay attention, no? You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. Grace. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice, my voice, Number one, indeed, and keep my covenant. What covenant is he referring to, people? Come on, what covenant is he referring to? Talk loud now. What covenant is he referring to? Abrahamic covenant. Because that's the covenant we know up until this point. Is that correct? He said, and keep my covenant. Then ye shall be a what? Peculiar treasure unto me above all people of uh, for, uh, above all people for all the earth. For all the earth is mine. Now, hold on. Let's put it in context. Uh, have we believed in the Abrahamic covenant? Come on. Have we believed in the Abrahamic covenant? What is the Abrahamic covenant? The Abrahamic covenant is what? Salvation through grace in Christ. It is righteousness by faith. Is that correct? So, what God is saying is that if you believe in that covenant, all right, then the result of believing in that covenant is this, that you will be a peculiar treasure, treasure unto me above all the people of the earth. Remember, you are a chosen generation, a real peace truth, a holy nation. So, what he promised them that if they believe the gospel, First Peter two nine will happen. To them. Hallelujah, Amen. If they believed, if their response was a faith response, because as at this point, praise God, they hadn't believed. If you go and read the heroes of faith, you will find out that Moses is there, but Israel is not. Ah, Hebrews 11. If you read there, you will find that Moses is there. Which means that Moses believed in the Messiah. And what was happening in 19 was, God was telling Moses, go and preach the gospel to them. That if that they will have faith in the covenant of Abraham, what I promised Abraham, I will make them this. So what God was asking for was what? Faith. Amen. For them to believe God like Abraham did so that they will be declared what? Righteous. Are you following? So when he says, all right, if you will obey my voice, the voice that Adam disobeyed. Are you following? So he's, an, he's giving them an opportunity. So Adam had the voice of God and disobeyed. Romans 5.19. To by one man's disobedience. Amen. Parakoe means what? He heard and dismissed it. He heard and disregarded it. So God presents it to Israel. So to Adam, he presented it to one man. But here in Exodus 19, he presents it to a nation. He said, nation of Israel, if you will believe in my promise as a nation, then all of you will be my priests. 
Notice, he didn't talk about making a tribe a priest. It was all of them that were supposed to be priests. They were supposed to be a nation of priests, just like the church is. Eh? Good. So all those Levitical priesthood was something happened. It wasn't God's plan. That's why I told you last week that Levitical priesthood was what? Was temporal. It wasn't the eternal plan. God's plan was to make all men kings and all men priests. God's plan was for Israel not to have a physical king. He was supposed to be the king because the plan was all of them were kings and all of them were priests. God's plan was not to make another man rule over them. Are you paying attention? That's why in Christ, you now find we are, I mean, he has made us a kingdom of kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. Ephesians, uh, Revelations 5.10, Revelations 1.6. Amen. Shall reign on the earth. He said, and shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Now pay attention. Let us now see what the response was. Pay attention. No? And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. God was looking for faith, right? Let's say what they said. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord had spoken, we we do. <laughs> Are you getting what was going on? He was asking for them to believe. Because obedience, he was to, to obey his voice, all right, and to keep his covenant is referring to the faith that Abraham had. They were talking about works. Did they ask them to do anything? No. But they said, listen, all that the Lord has spoken, we we do. In the Hebrew, what he's actually saying is, it's an arrogant terminology in the Hebrew language. What they're saying is, all that the Lord is saying, we are, we are capable, we are able to do. Don't worry, tell him to chill. You understand? I should relax. We, 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 are, we, are, we are good. We, we, we have the capacity, the capacity to do it. There is nothing he asks us to do. We don't have the capacity to do. The moment they said that, now look at how everything changed. He said, a lot of people answered together and said, all that the Lord had spoken, we will do. And Moses returned to the words of the people. Whose word did he return? The words of what? The people unto the Lord. Now look at what now the Lord now said. Based on what they said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud. That uh, uh, unto the king uh, that the people may hear when I speak with you, with who, with you, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people um, upon Mount Sinai, and thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, take it to yourself, that ye you go not up into the mount or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall surely be put to death. First time. Because there was no faith response. So he's saying, because there is no faith response, don't come near the mount. The only person that should approach this mount is Moses. Why? Moses has believed. Oh, hallelujah. Moses has what? Believed. So because Moses has believed, no death to him. But the whole nation has not believed. They want a works relationship so they can't come here. If they come here, they will die. Are you paying attention? Guys, are you paying attention? Let me also show you. If you go through from Exodus chapter number 12 to Exodus chapter 16, you're going to find something very interesting. Is, is this good word? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. From Exodus chapter number 12, Amen, to Exodus chapter 16, you're going to find out that the children of Israel tempted Moses. They tempted Moses, I think, three times. All right? You find out that they tempted him when they were hungry. He said, ah, we wish we had stayed in Egypt. Amen. God heard and Moses go and talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. Then God sends manna. What did God say? God sent what? Manna from heaven. They at the time they were thirsty. They murmured. What is murmuring? It's not unbelief. Yeah? They murmured. Ah, what is all they cheat with Moses? 
We are thirsty. Go to a rock. Hallelujah. Waters of Meribah. Go to a rock. God said, you know, strike the rock. Moses struck the rock. Water came out. And they drank. They sinned, but there was no death. Hallelujah. They what? They sinned, no death. Why? It was a grace relationship. Praise the Lord. And in a grace relationship, there is no what? Death. Even when there is what? Sin. Are you paying attention? Then after Exodus 20, they murmured again. What was the relation? Serpents came in and began to kill all of them. <laughs> Why? Because it was no longer what? A grace relationship. Who chose it? They did. What the Lord demands, we are able to do. We have the capacity to do. Not we've heard of the covenant you have with Abraham and we believe on it for, for righteousness. Is that, what, is that what, He was asking them for faith. Obeying God's voice is, is faith. So the Lord came. So you now find that, that Exodus 19, then you now enter Exodus 20. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. If you do it, you shall die. If you do this, you shall die. If you do this, you shall die. You understand? You now found out that God now gave them the law through angels for them to now understand it's like these guys are stubborn. That's why you notice. The Bible says, calls the children of Israel during this time, it says, ye stiff-necked and what? Stubborn. In Hebrews 4, it talks about they were not able to enter into his rest because of what? Unbelief. So that means there was a rest they could have entered. Are you following what I'm saying? There was a rest they could have entered, but because they didn't realize that they, who they were, they were still believing that they could attain righteousness by what they could do. So they were saying, what the Lord has taught, commanded, we are able to do. We can. We can do it. In fact, the word in Hebrew means we can produce it. So we can produce the righteousness. We can pro whatever he says, we can produce it. The law was to show them. You don't know what you're talking about. Though. You can't. Why? Because you're a sinner. Why? Because you are an unbeliever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are an unbeliever. You are not like Father Abraham who believed in the promised seed. Amen. That would come, which is Christ, who would make salvation through grace available for all. So every man, woman, and child who had faith in the coming Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible calls that man, all right, he is what? All right, saved with what? Faithful what? Abraham. Hallelujah. That's why David cried out. He said, blessed, he talks about the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness, what? Without the law. Romans 4. Then he now talks about Abraham. It was that message, that gospel, the children of Israel rejected. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So can you see where the law came now? Come on, can you see it now? Can you see it now? Very, very important. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Imagine, before the law, they murmured, no death. They sinned, no death. In fact, what happens is that when they, when they murmured, Christ was revealed in the manner, right? Right? The heavenly manner. When they sinned, Christ was revealed in the water. Christ was revealed in that when Moses struck the rock, he was talking about Christ will come to die. And when he dies and his body is broken, they will grieve living waters. Hallelujah. Will be what? Will be poured out. So the response to their sin was Christ. Showing you that the solution that God has provided for man's rebellion is who? Christ. The universal need of all men is who? Christ. So when men, Christ, 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 Christ. But when this one's now said we are able to do, God now says it's like these guys, they don't get it. So that when Christ is come, they will not say, What do you mean? We are not sinners now. What's wrong with you? You understand? <laughs> Who needs a savior? Get out of here, job. Let's give them the law so that they will really understand what's happening here. Praise God. Uh, you understand? Notice something that apart from Exodus 12, the Passover. The Passover was supposed to be done what? Once every year. Remember, 
as a remembrance of God brought you out of Egypt. That was the purpose. Oh. Finish. But after Exodus 20, there were now a series of sacrifices. You understand? You carry your leg like this, you offer sacrifice. Before the law, the woman who was menstruating was not unclean. I hope you know that. Do you know that? She wasn't unclean. It was the law that made her unclean. All those that shall not, that shall not, that shall not, that shall not, that shall not. They were not, they were not active from Exodus 1 to Exodus 19. The purpose was to increase sin, consciousness. Because so that man will now know, ah, I need a savior. So anyone that reads the law of Moses where we come to that con he will not, he will, if you read the law of Moses, you will not say, I can do it. No, he will like, I can, how can I do it? It's not possible now. Uh -huh. You will not say, exactly. So you need who? Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. So the law shows you that self-righteousness is a waste of time. Because you can never be righteous by your works before God. That's the message of the law. So you bring you to Christ. Now what has Christ done? Hebrews chapter 10, last we round up. Amen. Hallelujah. So the man in Christ, the man who has believed, will never be called a sinner before God. Amen. The man may make mistakes before men, but before God he is righteous. Before God is righteous. If he believes in Jesus. Before God is sinless. So when we walk in the spirit, walking in the spirit is not for God. Amen. We walk in the spirit, all right, for fellowship with the brethren. Because, for example, if a brother, you slept with another brother's wife, will you have fellowship with him? Can you have discussion, you see? And we talking, I, I do, and the man knows. You know, fellowship is broken, is that correct? Yeah. So the fellowship cannot be pure. <laughs> so we should walk in the street. Or we do business. All right? And you say, it's 10 million naira. I'm going to give you 15%. All right? You see, by the numbers in the spread, check. You can see. I'm giving blah, 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 blah. Then after 18 months, no money. Can we have fellowship? You know, at that point, we now begin to build love covers the multitude of sins. And we have to preach the love, 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 preach it, 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 preach it. Then hope that you pay the money before the fellowship is restored. And in fact, that restoration is not even complete because you want to give the person money again. Praise God. Are you following what I'm saying? So walking in the spirit is actually to keep the fellowship of the bread. Walking in love is for you. Walking in love is not so God said, ah, oh, hey. oh, you're walking in love now. Okay, you have access. No. The access was provided by the blood of Jesus. Independent of your own works. Amen. Walking in the spirit is for fellowship with the brethren. Walking in the spirit is so that you have a good testimony before men. So that your ministry will be effective among men. Because though God forgives, men don't. Or men hardly. Though God forgets, men don't do. Have you noticed men don't forget? You say, ah, I remember in 1950s. You, if you talk to your dad, you know your daddy talks like that too. In the 1950s, those of you watching internationally, what that means in Yoruba is that it's like the guy gave someone, um, got knocked someone up. Men don't forget. So walk in the spirit so that men will not have something to remember. That will put them in offense and make it difficult for you to, to preach the gospel to them. Amen. It's like I was saying, there are things we don't do. I was saying yesterday on Twitter. There are things we don't do as believers, not because they are wrong. Are you following? There's no law. You understand? Because when we start talking about it's wrong, it's wrong, are, we are going back to law of Moses. Are you following what I'm saying? Is it right? Because my, myself and my wife were discussing with us. Is it right for a, a, a Christian to wear bikini? A Christian sister to wear bikini. You understand? You can't, there's no law against bikini wearing. Amen. You can't start saying it's a sin. How? There's no law that says it's a sin. Amen. Praise God. But you and I know. That is a Christian sister. You understand? God help that she doesn't have flesh that much. You know, maybe she's... And she now wears bikini. And she's displaying all the assets God, got, she, God gave her through her mother and father. All right, on Instagram. And she uploads it. And, and you all know that Christian brothers or any brother that has testosterone in his blood, beholding the glory of God in the mirror of Instagram, will not just say and say, Robo shiakatila by your glory. No. Some thoughts will come in. Are you following? So all these are what? 
lawful, but not all things are profitable. So in, in Christ, we don't insist on our rights. You know what I'm saying? Uh, can, you, can the Christian brother play his hair and wear your ring and all of that? Hallelujah. Uh, is it a sin? No, there's no, there's no, it is a sin written anywhere. But the question is, is what will be the reaction of people seeing you do that? For example, if I wore your ring, maybe I put like two here. Hallelujah. Then I wore dreads. Then when we are worshiping God, glory. First of all, I know Edidio is going to have a problem. I want to know where Edidio is. Edidio doesn't know how to. I say, Pastor, what's happening? <laughs> Open up. Talk to me. <laughs> is there a midlife crisis happening? What's going on? Is there a problem? Why? Because this is not normal. <laughs> then I begin to say, see, it's because of your cultural context. You understand? It's because you're in Nigeria. Hey, you see, when you start doing all of that, it shows something is wrong. All that explanation. You understand? That long story that you are telling. You, see, you understand? Because when, if that person is a sinner, you, have, you, are, you are trying to explain away the, the, the obstruction he has to receiving your gospel. You are wasting time. Imagine you, you get on crusade ground before Nigerians, Yoruba people. You understand? Uh, I, before you start talking, Kilo Show. Ah, she, <laughs> Are you a Shango worshiper? What is going on? Kilo Show, oh, plate in ah, Wow, ah, earring. Ah, she could see, oh, were you, ah, she or more Yoruba? Not, when was asking that question? Something is wrong. You, they, it's going to be difficult for the word of God to have free course. Praise God. That's why sometimes when she starts going out, we say, don't wear treasure, wear something, you see, let it cover your this thing, cover your. It's not because anything is in all of those things. It's got people you want to go and preach. So that there will be no impediment for them hearing the gospel and focusing on the gospel alone. Hallelujah. That is what is called Christian consecration. In Christian consecration, what is right, what is seen is not the subject. It is, does this thing edify? Period. It's about edification. Not about right and wrong. We are not under the law. Hallelujah. We are not under the law. Glory to God. Amen. Don't say, ah, can a Christian wear a tattoo? Where? There's no law against it. So if a Christian wear a tattoo, he has not sinned. If you like, if you, if you like, go on the map of Nigeria, the map of the world, put it on your body. You have not sinned. But the problem is, you will find out that by the time you stand, before maybe, maybe people someone like, God help you in your ministry, that the geo invites you. And you are standing in that redemption camp, and you are preaching the gospel. And everybody is seeing, you, they will be distracted because, ah, you know, they show born again, Sha. Sha, sure. Ah, no, me, sure. Sha. Ah. Let's pray for our daddy Gio because if our daddy Gio was prayerful, he would have seen that spirit at work in this person. You know, you know that's what I'm talking about. You don't need that drama in ministry. Are you following what I'm saying? It's not necessary. So limit it. There are some folks that, because the Jericho in their head, there are some people that will never listen to them, no matter how. I'm, I'm telling you. In this country. They, uh, just so that I put cream on my hair. Nothing is there. In my own hair. But as a people, the moment they see, they are not going to listen. Hallelujah. In Christ, there are things we don't do. Not because they are wrong. Not because it is a sin. But because it does not edify the people we are attempting to reach. Amen? And if you cannot accept that, you are a baby Christian. No matter the Greek and Hebrew you know. You are a baby. And you are not fit for leadership. Hallelujah. Because the leader understands that for him to win men, he must be all things. To what? All men. Hallelujah. For I know that the guy who wears tattoos... If I go to him without tattoos, he's got no problem with it. I can reach him. Amen. And I can also reach a guy who is not wearing tattoos. So that means I can reach a brother. But if I'm wearing tattoos, I can only reach with ease the guy who is wearing tattoos. But there will be an issue. You understand? So it will always come up. You now have to say, ah, it was when I was in the world. If you check it, most of you, that's the best excuse when I was in the world. 
Let's round up. Hebrews 9, 22. Ah, now look at it. It says, And almost all things are by the blood, poured with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no what? Remission of... There's no what? Remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with this, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Hebrews chapter number 10. All right. And it says, in verse 10, it says what? All right, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he has offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand for uh, right hand of God, for henceforth, for, uh, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his fools too. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are what? Sanctified. Now I want to show you something I close something I want you to think about. I want to think about it that many a times in the epistles when it refers to sacrifices that were offered for sins, he always speaks about sacrifices that were offered for sins according to the what? To the law. Question, were the sacrifices that were offered for sins, uh, was it when the law was given, people began to offer sacrifices? No. Abel offered sacrifice, didn't he? Abraham offered sacrifice, didn't he? Praise God. Jacob offered sacrifice, didn't he? Isaac offered sacrifice, didn't he? But notice something. Never was it mentioned in respect to remission of sins. Because the faith of those men was not in the sacrifice. Their faith was in what? In Christ. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed this morning? Lift up your hands and just bless his name. Hallelujah. Rege de Gis of Rogodos, Rakash Tiranda, Ura Katakaba Pasuti, Eke Pokorokotoli Masunda la Candele Gritos on Progigala, Yaragados Prehisti, O Mongoku, Munkaka, Zanti Gaze, O Bradisti, Legon Prodisca, O Mandadamas. Ego zubrogoto goborogoto koboshian de kala masundo inge de giboro mosum brokoton zel kidra hada igre ese kidi gidi 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 giboro sunto kobori masindiri anda na mahaya ele ke zubrogoto goboro bosunto kodi basia bahaya labano spragera mano mas ivara kastorosti come rise up on your feet and just bless his name hallelujah everybody those of you watching from home just bless his name amen we have a small Number of people here, hallelujah. Orama shigedo shaname shaname do orebe sopra me to nashino shandame shandame ho kere mano sopra de ho shandame shandame ho urudo do ge sopra me to zipra ge zipra ke do. Marago so prefeto no nos trides tu go side go side do Come on go ahead and worship him Maragaba ka sobra kada kababa kada hora disa Ala ni namaka sobro godo gora ka shiga da ba We bless your name oh God we bless your name Ala ma so kodo mon sabana na sana La gada ba sobro godo sprahagasta Urate ka sonda ka basu we're safe forever. Oh, oh, sons of God together. Oh, oh, living tabernacles. Oh, oh. Forever, oh, 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 yes, we are saved forever. Oh, oh, oh. We are sons of God together. Oh, oh, oh. We are living tabernacles. Oh, oh, oh. We are complete in Jesus. Say hey. 
Just um, send to the account numbers on the screen and uh, send that. Oh, those of you here also, you can do a transfer. The account numbers on the screen. The account number for those of you watching is 017-930-9493. 017-930-9493. There also those of you watching from abroad. All right, they're going to put the account numbers you can send to. All right, you can do a direct transfer from anywhere from the world, around the world directly to us praise god praise god hallelujah 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 thanks for listening to this message we hope you were blessed for other messages please visit our website www.okcc.org thank you